is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome to this week's Killer Innovations. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. We are back here in the studio in Colorado. Um, I'm actually getting ready to head out on a little bit of travel, uh, so I'll be doing some shows from the road. We actually will be playing... Um, some other shows that I'm actually uh, doing a recordings for some guests because Sunday can sometimes be um, a little more difficult. Uh, so we are actually heading to Florida. Um, if you listened to a show a couple of weeks ago uh, with regards to my grandson and his medical condition, we are going there to spend a little bit of time, but I will be uh, doing the show from uh, from Colorado. Now, last week's show, we had on a young innovator, 18 years old, who had developed a medical device to help people return motion to their hands and their bodies after they've had a stroke. Uh, this week, we are actually going even younger on the, on the, on the innovators list. Um, in this case, we have invited a young guest, Bishop Curry, to the show. Uh, so Bishop, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? I know you're down in Dallas, and I appreciate you and your family uh, taking the time out of your schedule on a Sunday to join us. Yeah, I can hear fine. Good, good. So Bishop got uh, got uh, introduced to us. You know, our show, as you know, we've been covering a lot of young innovators, those that they probably uh, are at the age category that would shock a lot of us as to being able to do some really uh, new and interesting things. So someone reached out to us, uh, introduced us to to Bishop, and his family, and we heard about his story and thought we'd use the platform of the radio show, wanted to highlight uh, the, the need for this solution, but also to talk about young innovators and the fact that there really isn't an age category. It isn't about you gotta be in college or you have to be out in the work world or you have to have lots of money, but that you can actually innovate um, in, wherever you're at currently at the moment. So. So Bishop, tell us a little bit about yourself. You live in Dallas with your family. Talk talk about your family a little bit. So my family is like so. My mom works at, works with special needs. She's also a volleyball coach. My dad works for Toyota, and my brother has his own company, which is called Kid Ladder. And my sister is just being the daughter of the family. <laughs> And how old is your brother? He is nine. <laughs> so, so you've innovated your solution, and your brother at nine has this thing called Kid Ladder. That's pretty amazing. So let's talk a little bit about the, the motivation for this invention that you came up with. So um, as I understand it, you saw, read, or heard about uh, this tragic accident with a young infant. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that story. Well, like, we're, we're all watching the news, and then a baby dies in a hot car, and her name was Fern. Fern and um, I thought, like, this shouldn't happen to anybody. So I came up, like, I took a pencil and a pen, and then I drew up, the like, the first model, which was, like, a literal car seat. And... And that's basically how, how it happened. And so in this case, you, you, you heard about the story of Fern, six months old. She dies in a car after she's been left in the car from, from the heat, right? <laughs> and I guess she lives, her family uh, lives fairly close to you. So um, in this case, Dallas, Texas. I was just in Dallas, in fact, uh, um, earlier this week. Uh, for some meetings, and it was unbelievably hot there. So you took it on kind of as a personal challenge to come up with a solution that, that kids should not uh, die from being left in their in the automobiles or being forgotten in the car. So tell us a little bit about your, you know, the, the early idea, the early ideas that you came up with. Well, the earlier ideas, like. You mean like the side oasis or like the first models of it? Yeah, well, the first, how you got everything from the time you saw the TV, you know, the, the, the reporting of the child, you know, unfortunately dying, 
all the way through the process. Share all the, the, the ideas you came up with, what worked, what didn't work, and what you learned. So um, our first, like, yeah, our first model, we took, like, my sister's old car seat, and I tried to, like, organize where everything went, which was a fail. Then our next <laughs> idea, I tried to consider milk. So hold on, what, fa- what, what failed on that? What, did you, what were you trying to do? I was trying to, like, make organize everything, but everything kept falling off. <laughs> so I had to think of, like, a new design that was smaller and it's less complicated. So, like, our second model was, um, hmm, let me think. Oh, yeah, our second model was actually, um, like, this L-shaped thing, and, um, we used acetone, and we melted it with styrofoam, and we were doing, like, um, making plastic out of both of those, because you know the science experiment when you put, like, like styrofoam and acetone and it's just like sinks Yep. and it leaves like a plastic at the bottom. We tried to use that, but all the plastic spilled out and it would never dry. <laughs> so like I, I honestly considered melting like plastic silverware. I would have worked way better. And so you were I trying think. to melt the plastic for what? To create a very specific shape? Not, no, no. I We tried because, like, our shape was not very, like, specific at all. It was just a block. Yep. Which was, like, I don't know. I don't know what we were going to do with it, but we are probably going to do, like, new shoot. But then my fourth model in that, um, like, that I have now and sometimes use to bring on TV is a 3D printed model. I use Tinkercad to, um... 3D print it, and like it's basically like the exact model of what it looks like. So, what does what does this device do? What is it you're trying to? How does this prevent the child from being forgotten or left in in the car? So it has a sensor at the bottom, and it senses like like you know how like a heat sensor camera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It has it's like that, and you know where. It really senses like actual people Mm -hmm. like all the body parts and everything it's going to sense that and then it's going to when it realizes it's a baby and like not a purse because sometimes people um, throw like grocery bags or purses in the baby car seat yep and when it realizes it's not a purse or a bag it um starts blowing cold air and it tries to keep it at a pacific temperature yep and so I'm not really supposed to go deep in the de- I'm not supposed to really go deep in the details because I don't really want it to get stolen as like an idea. So I'm gonna be careful about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody's got to make sure that you get your your and I and I in your write up, I uh, I know that you've uh, filed your uh, your patents on your ideas already. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you've got that you got you've got at least that protection. So, but basically, the what you've designed is some way to actually sense that there's a real baby in the car, and so yes. therefore, then what does it call the parents or something or put on an alarm? Yeah, there's yeah, there's a detector that calls the parents and the police, which is going to okay. be like kind of complicated. So we got to get like all the police stations to cooperate and everything. Yeah. So therefore, then you know, so if someone does forget it. The parents are reminded, hey, you know, I think they're, I think you've got a child in the car. And then if it starts to get too warm, then it starts, you know, calling police or other people in order to uh, get more, uh, to get more action to, to get the baby, uh, you know, out of the car. And so, yeah, so, they... so how, how have you tested this device so far? Have you actually well... put it in the cars and tried it out? Well, we have um we are we are testing like all the mechanics part of it, how the fan works, how the cooling system and stuff. We can't really get the sensor quite right, but that's okay because we aren't <laughs> using the models we're using. The manufacturers can provide everything we need for the um like for everything we need for the Oasis. So right. it's gonna have everything not to alarm anybody. Perfect. So 
We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll continue on our conversation with Bishop Curry, talking about his work and his innovations and the motivation he had in trying to solve a, 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 a national problem, particularly in the summertime, where uh, children accidentally get left uh, in the car and the car overheats and it has uh, catastrophic results. So when we come back, we're going to pick up this conversation uh, with Bishop and uh, find out more about uh, kind of the current status and what his plans um, are for the uh, for his innovation. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Killer Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network. Biz Talk Radio. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing Killer Innovation. Welcome back to Killer Innovations. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. Before we jump back into this segment of the show, just need to do a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, which is Zoom. Zoom is what allows us to bring our guests in for the interviews that are remote. We also use Zoom to coordinate all of the activities, um, scheduling and promoting of guests. And then also I use Zoom in my day job where I'm a CEO and I have uh, my team members scattered out all over the world. Zoom has basically the best audio, the best video, and the best collaboration technology, and works everywhere. I've done Zoom calls from Rwanda, Africa, to Beijing, China, to Auckland, New Zealand, um, and of course, everywhere in the United States that I travel to. So check it out. Zoom is made available a free account, so go to killerinnovations.com Zoom, you can get your free account. It allows you to collaborate with up to 50, that's right, 50 people. And check that out. Use this tool. It's, it's basically the next generation of all of the old previous tools that are out there. And they recently just announced that it now works with all of the old Polycom rooms and all the Cisco telepresence rooms. So even if you have all of those uh, previous systems, Zoom works with them. So check it out. It will definitely kick up the productivity of you and your team and your organization. So hop on over, killinnovations.com slash Zoom, and check it out. And if you do go forward and use Zoom, let them know where you heard about it here on the Killer Innovation Show. So let's continue on our, com let's continue on our conversations with Bishop here. Uh, we're coming back into the second segment. So Bishop, share with us a little bit about the process. It sounds like you went through a bunch of different prototypes. And what did you learn through the whole process of going through that prototyping process? First, like, we did a GoFundMe to get up to, like, $20,000. And so we got $40,000, which is, like, twice, like, $2,000, $20,000 over our goal. So, yay, America. <laughs> and um, also, so we gave that $20,000 to this dude who is a lawyer. And he's gonna help us. That that he we he used that money for like the oasis and basically, like the process of going to like going to the national patent office, which he mm -hmm. did. Except like it's gonna be here like next year. Like that's when it's gonna be like fully pat patented off the back because they're doing. We hope so because like they're doing like so much. Um, like research because they're constantly on the computers like there's is there anything like that does this right and i'm like i'm really hoping there isn't because like sometimes because like i thought of i had a nightmare that this one guy posted this picture of that like from like nobody even knows him and he's like from absolutely just came out of the random and i'd be like so what bishop so what Bishop is talking about is the requirement, the U.S. Patent Office requires, has a term that they require for innovation called uniqueness. It has to yeah. be unique. It can't be something that's already in the marketplace, already shipping, or already patented. If it's already out there, it's classified as what we call prior art. 
<laughs> so you have to, and part of the patenting process is, is they go through and scour everything out there trying to make sure that the approach that they're doing um, is unique. Uh, and, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you, Bishop, the, the concern you have about having someone who randomly comes out of left field with a similar idea is something that everybody that's ever invented has. But oh. it's actually more rare than you think. It's not as common. You know, if you come up with something totally novel in your own head, in your own approach, um, the odds are actually pretty high that you can get a patent, if it's not an obvious thing, but that you, you can get a patent on it. But everybody worries about it. It's one of the things that I get a lot of phone calls from, for people yeah, about, uh, you know, is my idea unique enough? Will it get a patent? Will a patent be issued? And it takes longer than you think. It takes a lot longer than you think. So, so now that you've you've got you've got the patent work done, you've got you've done the 3D printing in order to get um, some basic um, work done. What what's next on the horizon for you? What where where do you go next? You know, obviously you're well, waiting for the patent, but are you talking to companies about doing something with this technology? Well, I think we're going to go to like some manufacturers who that will um, basically build a factory, I think, or mm. have like those um, like self factory machines that link together, and there's like one arm that puts things together and screws them, mm -hmm. screws them in, which are really cool and really <laughs> useful for like things like this size. It's a, it's not like they can't build like cars because they aren't that big. It's like as big as like a claw machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're actually then looking to actually start building up some product, you got to get it out there and get it tested, <coughs> make sure it works. Um, and then uh, are you are you planning on then then selling it to people like on Amazon or is that kind of your model? Uh, I just want I want to get the I don't really care where it gets sold as long as it gets out. Okay. Okay. So and, I, I also found I also found like a gift, like so literally like with any problem, I just put things together and I solved it because somebody asked me a question about the drunk driving and then I told them an idea for it, except they didn't quite get what I was saying, even though I told them like all the, if you put all this together, you'll get your solution. So if like literally anybody asked me how to build something that's not too like for like a like not, not too like complicated or like 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 a simple world problem like heat stroke well it's not really simple but so you so building. you're actually you're actually helping others then with their ideas right now mm -hmm. interesting because somebody because yeah, somebody told me like for like like something that would help drunk drivers in case if it was going to be like this Google map thing. Well, it's not an app. It's something that you attach to your car. And like when you go somewhere, it will locate like all like the places that have like um, that sell like high alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And then that, that thing will um like when you come back near the car, it's going to, it's going to be like, it's going to call a cab and it's going to, it's going to be like, keeping you there until like you the cab gets there and then it's gonna drive you home until you can come back and get the car but this is like a first this is like a first thing so like if i really thought about it more i can um make it change yeah so that's great because that's let, i'd like to hold off let's talk a little bit more about that in the next segment we're going to take another quick commercial break here Come back and wrap up our conversation with with Bishop Curry about his idea and taking it forward as far as how to protect children who may accidentally have been left in a car uh, to save them. But it sounds like Bishop's also advising and helping others on uh, you know on their other ideas. So with that, uh, we're going to pick up this conversation as soon as we come back from this quick commercial break uh, and continue on our conversation. We'll also talk a little bit about Kid Ladder. The uh, program kind of uh, tech camp that him and his brother do. So you want to hear about that also? Think about it. A fifth grader. A fifth grader. So what's your excuse? What's your excuse for sitting on the couch? So stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation with Bishop Curry. You're listening to Killer Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network. BizTalk Radio. This 
is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back to Killer Innovations. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. Before we hop back into this segment, need to do a shout out to a new sponsor, uh, HP. Now, some of you are going to yell, whoa, 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 time out, foul. You know, you're, you were the formerly the chief technology officer for HP, which is true. Um, I retired at the end of 2011. Uh, but recently, HP has uh, approached us and began sponsoring the show. Uh, obviously, we have a long history with their, with their products and technologies. But it's really driven by the support that HP has given me over the years for some of the charity work that I do. When I was at HP, we started Hacking Autism, which is a nonprofit that focuses on helping those that are on the autism spectrum, both with technology for those that uh, typically are at the, the nonverbal end of the spectrum. Also, most recently, HackingAutism.org has been focused on employment. Um, we started this work when uh, at HP as part of an HP program, and HP graciously allowed me to take it on. Through their sponsorship, if you've been a longtime listener of the show, you know that this is not a money maker. You know, look, 13 years of doing the show, um, and I've uh, been funding this out of my own pocket. Uh, with sponsorships, both Zoom and with HP, we only take sponsorships for products and technologies we actually use, so it's not a money thing. And the money they don't they provide as part of the funding frees up dollars that then goes. Um, to the charity organization. So it's actually a big help in funding and uh, moving the, the charity work uh, forward and both HP and Zoom um, have been uh, phenomenal uh, sponsors. HP's come up with some more recent products. I'm now carrying an Elite Book 360. Love it. Ultra thin, phenomenal on the Elite Book line. If you're a business user of HP products, go talk to your CIO, ask them for that Elite Book 360. You will absolutely love it. Uh, we also have been using uh, Z2 workstations. We have an HP Slice right here that actually uh, is what the Zoom sessions um, connect to. So uh, we're completely outfitted here and love it. So go ahead and check it out. Go over to killerinnovations.com slash HP, killerinnovations.com slash HP. And you can see all of the products and technologies that we are using here in the studio uh, that are provided by, uh, by HP. Soon we will also have another announcement. We're building a second studio, so stay tuned. Not going to get into the details of that. We'll probably have more news about that in the fall, but uh, we're pretty excited about it. We're in the phases of, of doing that. That would give us a lot more flexibility to support and, uh, and do the shows um, from wherever we're at, whether we're here in Colorado, Florida, or anywhere um, around the, the globe. So. Uh, you're definitely going to want to, uh, to to stay up with that. And also, HP's most recently has been focused on uh, the work around security and securing those laptops, securing your printers, securing your personal and private information. So you are going to want to um, check that out. Security is becoming increasingly important for all of us. And so that is uh, uh, that is important. Like all the processes. And so, like all therefore, the... hey, uh, Bishop, let's pick yes. up our conversation on where we were um, with Bishop Curry. So, uh, so hey, hey, Bishop, let's talk more about what's next for you. You're in fifth grade. What is it? What What is it you want to do with your with your future? What is it you want to you want to become when you when you <laughs> when you grow up? Which is kind of the standard question. Everybody wants to ask. I'm an inventor and an actor. An inventor and a doctor? Actor. Oh, actor. An actor. Oh, okay. Why Maybe. an why an actor? I I like movies. You like movies. Well, actually, Plus. during the commercial break, or actually before we even started the show, Bishop and I were talking about he's uh, some of the what he wants to do with his gear in order to get his own YouTube channel. Up and going. I think you got to be a little bit older though to have your YouTube channel. Uh, no, like you can be any age to have a YouTube channel. So, um, and so, what other inventions are you working on? You talked a little bit before we went to the commercial break and shared, um, for instance, what you were uh, a friend of yours who was talking about specifically uh, drunk, you know, the you know drunk driving in, in the vehicle. So, talk about some of the other ideas you're working on. 
Well, I'm not really working on them. I just mentioned them. Mm. It was like the drunk driving idea was basically like this. It goes along Google Maps, except it's not like an app. You get this little tab, and it's like, and you can um like click it to your car and where it like wherever you drive it'll like it'll locate you and if you're like going to any like alcoholic places or mm-hmm. like anywhere selling like like really um like things that could like change your mood or like what you do it's mm-hmm. going to like call a cab like right like when you arrive there and you're there for like longer than an hour it's going to call a cab mm-hmm so what do your what do your friends and teachers think about all of this? You've had some articles. You've been out there a little bit with your with your original invention. So what what do you hear from your friends or from your teachers at school? Well, they either want money or they want to work with me. <laughs> so you know, want to work with you? You mean like your your friends want to actually become part of your 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 company to do something with this? Yeah, they also want to like. They also want me to help them with their ideas. Well, that's not always a bad thing, right? If you're an innovator and you and you've proven how to do it, but you got to be a little careful because I guess it can eat up a lot of your time. You still have to. You still got to go to school while you're yeah. also trying to do something with your idea. Yeah, there's not a lot of free time. And so, and what if, if I, did I hear this correctly? You're being invited to give a, a TED talk. Oh uh, yeah, like I'm gonna fly up to Maryland. Oh, so it's like a TEDx talk somewhere up there, right? Up in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's very that's that's actually very uh, very exciting. Not many people get invited by TED to come do a TED talk. So you get yeah. your you get your 18 minutes of fame. You've got to make sure you uh, <laughs> you you nail you nail your talk pretty uh, pretty cleanly. It depends, like, about, like, how, like, how big the, um, the stadium, like, is it, like, as big as the stadium, or is, like, the smallest this room here? Think of it, think of it as kind of, with a TEDx, most TEDx talks are along the lines of, uh, like, a movie theater. Ah, it's about it, It's about that size. It's not like, you're, you're not going into Redskins, oh, you're not going to go into Redskins Stadium and, uh, and give a talk. <laughs> You know, but it's more like a it's more like a movie theater. Um, but that's ex- but that is exciting from from uh, the stand. Ty or uh, some of the other young um, innovators that have been on the show, a number of them have also given, you know, TED talks. But I've never had a guest on as young as you. You do qual- the you, you don't you do qualify. I've had I've had 15 year olds. I've had 17 year olds. I've had 18 years old. You you qualify as the uh, as the youngest uh, guest on the show, talking about their innovation work. Soon they're gonna get up to five. Oh yeah. Yeah. When if Isaiah's um, company gets very far, anybody can um, do it because it makes the patenting process way easier. Yeah, it does. I mean, it it is about getting the ideas and and getting uh, and getting it out there, right? But it's. Uh, as you as you shared, right? You have to raise a little bit of money in order to to make it real, to actually get something, you know, that could be, you know, turned Useful. into a product that you can actually ship it and sell it and support it. Mm-hmm. So who else is helping you? Who's advising you through this whole process? Like like guiding me? Yeah. Basically, my dad, because <laughs> he's like paying and like doing anything he can to help me get this out. Well, parent support is, 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 is important. In fact, that's probably one of the common themes across all of the young innovators we've had here on the radio show is the role of the parents, you know, from the standpoint of the, uh, uh, you know, parent, moms and dads, et cetera. So, um, so what's, what, what are you doing in school these days? Does your school have something that allows you to to continue to work on your ideas or work on your projects or do you have or you know like your 3d printers do you have those at your school well no but um they usually call me up in the office because that's what they did for my very like first interview because i was going to be on a newspaper and like they called me up there and and i talked to her I got to miss cl- a lot of class, <laughs> so 
Yeah, that was great. Hey, so Bishop, we're going to wrap it up here at this point um, in the show. I do appreciate you taking the time out of your um, your uh, your day to be part of this and sharing this with us. I'll have contact information if you want to track some of the articles that have been written about uh, Bishop and the pro and his project. So, Bishop, I thank you a lot for taking the time out of your schedule and for your parents for making you available. And it I was wish my you, pleasure. And I wish you the best of luck on your project. You too. Thank you. And with that, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We've got the last and final segment, and uh, we'll talk, give you an update on some of the other things and one big announcement. So we'll be right back after this break. Biz Talk Radio. is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back to Killer Innovations. We're going to wrap up today's show here in the fourth segment. Uh, we just wrapped up our uh, first three segments with Bishop Curry, a fifth grader who has worked out an idea to actually help save babies who accidentally get forgotten in their car seats in their cars, um, inspired by a, a young girl, Fern, in Dallas, Texas, who was six months old and um, it accidentally was left in the car and uh, died as a result of that. Uh, Bishop shared a whole bunch. I mean, it's kind of interesting to hear the innovation perspective from a fifth grader, right? And look, I, I can come up with 10,000 excuses. All of you can come up with 10,000 excuses of why you can't take an idea that you have and go do something with it. And here's a fifth grader, right? Who, okay, getting help from his parents. His dad's giving him some coaching guidance. Goes off and gets a fund me page sets up, asks for, you know, $20,000, gets $40,000 um, as part of his fund me page and is in the process of getting his patents and getting his prototype built and all those activities. So the question I have for all of us, me included, you know, is, so, you know, so what's our excuse? How many ideas do you have written down in your notebooks or on the back of a napkin or you're thinking about it at night going, wow, I, you know, I think I got a really great idea. What is preventing you from going off and doing something with it, right? So. Yeah, I think that's the encouragement, you know, whether it's last week's show where we listened to an 18-year-old in a medical device where him and his three buddies now are doing a skip year. They're not going right to college. They're going to take a year gap in between high school and college and uh, see how far they can actually take this idea and turn it into a real product. And now you've listened to Bishop uh, talk about uh, uh, his idea. Now, I can tell you, Bishop is the youngest guest I've ever had on this show. And it's been the only time I've ever been uh, in interviewing a fifth grader. I uh, brought back all kinds of memories with my kids at the time. So hopefully you uh, found that, uh, you know, both insightful, but also uh, a little, you know, encouraging of like, here's this kid who's doing something and, you know, what excuse do we have? So one big announcement I want to share with you today is we are launching the Innovators Community. So it's over at the innovators.community, the innovators.community. So if you've been following me for quite some time, you know that I've been teaching masterminds and I've also done coaching and, and mentoring. This, however, is a community of innovators who can support each other and provide expertise, whether that's ideation or prototyping, manufacturing, supply chain, sales marketing, you know, of a wide variety of expertise uh, coming together as part of the community. And it's really about the community supporting each other. Now, I'm very active. It's a Slack community that has been set up uh, by the Innovators Network, which this show is part of, and Kim McNicholas' show is part of, and um, you know, we have a whole bunch of people who've been on the show, actually guests on the show, who are active and, uh, and part, of the, it's part of the community. We'll also be hosting exclusive webinars and uh, online discussions and 
you know, pseudo kind of mastermind activities where one person is working on a very particular problem and the community comes together as kind of an online activity to help them through a problem. So why am I so big on this community? Well, one, look, I've done coaching and mentoring and I can usually take on maybe one or two um, senior executives in a coaching and mentoring. And that's great, but you can only have an impact on a few people. Um, I've done masterminds, I've hosted masterminds, and, you, and I'm, I'm kind of able to impact about eight to 10 people. And if you've been a long time listener of this show, you know that one of my big motivators is, is this is my way of paying it forward. How do I um, invest back into people the same way that Bob Davis, my original mentor, invested in my life that put me onto a track for the career that I've had? How do I help others? And that's where the community comes in. It allows for a high level of engagement, taking advantage of all the new tools, whether it's Zoom or Slack, um, and not be limited by two arms, two legs, and 24 hours a day. Plus, our community, the people that I interact with that are listeners and followers and people that I've now become friends over the 13 years of doing this show are phenomenal experts. You know, whether that's Seth Taylor at Stoshin in Salt Lake City or... Uh, John Osborne, who was most recently head of innovation um, at Kroger Foods, who's now doing a new uh, thing around uh, innovation in IoT. Um, Woody Woodward up in Michigan, he's been uh, innov a leading innovator in the uh, software, software consulting space for quite some time. So bringing all the, this expertise together um, into the community to really make that available to all of you, the listeners. So this is your opportunity. It isn't just about you listening to the show or listening to Kim McNicholas' show or periodically maybe dropping an email or commenting on a blog post or a show notes. Here's your opportunity to have daily, regular kind of that, you know, banging up against other innovators, finding, getting your questions answered, uh, you helping others because of your expertise and background and really bring this community together. It's a Slack community. It's private. You need to sign up. There is a registration process for it. You can find out more over at theinnovators.community. Theinnovators.community. That will be a landing page. It'll give you everything that is part of becoming a member of the community. You can check that out and uh, join us. We'd love to have you part of it. Some of you have already snuck around and found this page and have joined. Thank you for being great detectives. Um, but in this case, we're opening it up to the listeners of the podcast. We're not running ads yet. We're not opening it up to everybody. I want to give an opportunity for regular listeners of the podcast to go check that out. So again, theinnovators.community. So with that, we're going to wrap up today's show. Appreciate you taking the time. As I said, we're live in the studio today. We're going to be traveling to Florida with Caleb and my grandson and his health issues. You can go back and look for the show that is on um, orphan innovations if you want to hear more about what's going on in orphan drugs and the medical issues and situations that we're experiencing, but we've now found a community of people who also are experiencing it. So go check that out. And uh, thank you very much for... Uh, taking the time to be part of the, the show today. Thank you for uh, listening. Love to hear your feedback. Also, any topic you would like to have covered in upcoming shows, drop them our way, phil at kelloninnovations.com. That's an email that comes directly from me. And with that, keep on innovating. Don't let the innovation antibodies keep you down. Get out there, kick some butt, and change the world. We'll talk to you next week. The opinions you hear on Biz Talk Radio are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of this station, Biz Talk Radio, its management, or advertisers. The information on Biz Talk Radio does not constitute a recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or service. If you have any questions about Biz Talk Radio, contact us at 817-274-1609 or at biztalkradio.com. Biz Talk Radio. 